Hey guys, it's Patricia from tarantulaheaven.com. Today I wanted to talk about a really interesting study about tarantula movement. And uh, before we get going, this right here who you see moving is Spidey. She is my G. Rosea. It looks like she's thinking about going in or getting on her log, so I hope she'll move around for you today. Um, today I want to talk about a study I found that discovered tarantulas can actually run equally as fast with six legs as they can with eight legs. And that fascinates me because I generally feel like tarantula movement is fascinating. I don't know how you move all of those parts of your body all at once, all eight legs, and it not be an absolute mess. And the hydraulic system that tarantulas have also really makes me very, very impressed. <clears throat> so newer research said that they found that tarantulas don't actually need all eight legs, which is really interesting from an evolutionary standpoint of why do they have that many legs if they don't actually need them. But um, perhaps this next part explains that. They can drop as many as two to avoid predation. So maybe it actually is an advantage that they don't actually need all, but they have extra legs that they can just kind of pluck off if they don't need it. I will say the research has not been peer reviewed and I found the article on IFL Science and I love that website by the way. I'll leave the link down in the description below just so you guys can look at it. Um, I actually think, my heart thinks that this study was done unethically, but you guys can kind of let me know what you think. So this, the new research did take a look at how younger juvenile tarantulas compensate for when they have lost limbs. And this is known as autotomy. And it also examined how they're able to regenerate their limbs after a molt. The research also explored how regeneration of a new leg or legs influences how the tarantulas move. It also looked, about, looked into whether tarantulas behave differently when they've had repeated leg loss. So to do this research, and look at her, she's so beautiful. To do this research, um, the team used high-speed videos to record running in spiders, both before and after the legs were lost, as well as when they were regrown and then lost again. So it seems like these spiders that were involved in the study went through a lot in terms of them trying to get different footage of these tarantulas. So the researchers did focus on three things. Those were, do the spiders have lower speeds and less stability after they've lost a leg? That was an expectation that they would. They also thought tarantulas would maybe use a wider stance to compensate for missing limbs. And they also wanted to find out if the gait of the tarantulas would change. The tarantulas that they used were the Guatemalan tiger red rump tarantulas. And they were chosen specifically because they are fast runners. It seems like they can regrow limbs faster than others. It usually only takes one to two months in terms of what this study reported. So these spiders were placed in a clear box with a camera to record their movements. They used five spiders for this and they had successful bouts of leg removal. The study said that the legs were intentionally chosen. So the legs that were removed were chosen to cause maximum disturbance to the gate, as well as being legs that are most frequently lost in predator scenarios in the wild. And this is the part that I'm not totally down with in terms of how it, it happened, but um, I understand that sometimes for scientific purposes, we have to create certain circumstances in order to do the study. So not totally into this, kind of think it's unethical. One of the co-authors told New Scientist that once they were sluggish and not moving, we would glue the two legs we wanted them to drop to an index card. When they woke up, we would gently poke them with a fine tip paintbrush until they would drop those legs at almost the same time. I really hate thinking about that, to be honest. Um, so then the spiders were filmed before and after they lost the two legs to monitor if there were changes in the gait. They filmed them immediately after the limb loss and then 24 hours later. Then the tarantula would be left alone, I guess, to regrow. They probably took some footage. Then once the legs had regrown, they would lose them again in the same manner. And the results showed surprisingly that losing these two seemingly necessary legs didn't actually slow the spiders down. And within 24 hours, the tarantulas were actually able to achieve a stable gait and speed. And I think that's pretty cool. Um, I know that this is, might be completely instinctual, but um, being that we feel like these spiders probably can't learn. But I think that that is very interesting in terms of how the spider's body adapts very quickly and uh, figures out what it needs to do. I love that. Love that research, hate how it was done, but very valuable. And uh, authors of this paper is thinking that 
this could benefit how we do robotics and could be useful in designing robots that can actually correct their movements, self-correct their movements after suffering damage. And I've heard this a lot. I've heard that a lot of times um, people, scientists are looking to spiders to um, study what they can do in robotics. So anyway, that is that study. Let me know what you guys think. Do you think it was done in a way that probably it shouldn't have been? Um, I mean, I'm kind of thinking, what would be the most ethical way to remove specific legs? I really don't know. And I think it also depends on what your belief is about do tarantulas feel actual pain? I've definitely made videos about that before. So if you guys are interested, just seek those out on my channel. Um, to me, it seems kind of sticky still. But anyway, uh, let me know what you think. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful Tarantula Tuesday. I'll see you next week. Bye.